קהל שבת שלום, my name is Varda Gurben Shitrit, I was born in Greece. Um, I live in Eve Shalom, near Jerusalem, and this is the exhibition of other lives in the Bloomfield Science Museum in Jerusalem. And um, in a few minutes we'll get into the exhibition created by Mayan Shalef. I want to start by presenting a work piece by Alexei Shulgin. Alexei Shulgin is an artist living in Russia and in London. And he made this um, art piece actually presenting the life of a very old computer living in a street corner begging for money. You can see we have a place where people can put money inside. He's singing old pop songs and really begging for his life. And it's actually talking about the short life that we give for computers after one, one and a half years we replace them with another computer. But they have their own life. The Other Life exhibition is about uh, Alan Turing, about uh, computer science. We invited about 16 artists to present their works inspired by Alan Turing. And the first one is, as I say, Alexei Shulin. You can follow me. Uh, another uh, piece of art is presented here by two artists <coughs> named Jonathan Ben Simchon and Jack Kalish. Uh, it's actually about text. Turing uh, adored text. Yeah. Turing felt that text, um, when you think that the text is intelligent, then yeah. the one who wrote the text is intelligent. You see here a work called Illumination. We put here an article yeah. by Alan Turing, and the software is actually taking out poems from the article. Yeah. It, it lighting up words, and when you read the words one after the other, you can see that the software is breaking the words into uh, parts and rebuilding together to new sentences, and there is actually poems hidden inside Alan Turing's uh, article. This one is the article where he actually celebrated the idea of a mind and a machine, which is actually the, the smart computer. Another word wow. is here by Asaf Shaham. Asaf Shaham is presenting here five pictures uh, that are the outcomes that are the outcomes of two scanners scanning each other. There is no um, no man touch this uh, piece of art. Piece of art is only the output of two machines working together. What Asaf did is take the output, put it into frames, and presented it. But it's two autistic uh, uh, machines working together and presented the art. Is it art? Isn't it art only because it's the, the output of machines? That's actually the question that we're wanting to arouse here. And Osmer Lul, whose work is here, is dealing with the same question. Oz uh, is taking old printers and he's stacking the printer's head in the face that he's looking for, uh, her, for herself when, uh, at the beginning of the printing. And he's attaching to it all different parts, doing actually nothing. It's very Sisyphic work with a um, bucket full of holes and with a, a spachtel in Hebrew, uh, actually walking on air. Uh, he's breaking the printers. The printers are old as they are, but they are walking, they are living in their swan song. And you can see that they have their own lives, even though they are not attached to the computer. And it's very much like what Asaf did, actually giving life to the machines and to the computer, actually without us. Another interesting work is here by Rana Das. Rana Das is asking the same question that Asaf did when we see, when we see intelligent art made by something. Is it important if it's made by a computer or by a human being? What you see here are short poems. Some of them were written by people, some of them were written by software. And we invite the people to guess, is, it, is the writer a software or is the writer a, a, a person? And it's very hard to guess. This one, for example, I don't really know, I'm just guessing. If it's, it's a person, it's not a person. So you can go to the next one. Um, maybe it's a machine, it's a machine, but it's very hard to guess. I'm going to the next one. And if I'm right, I can see the whole poem and then get to the writer and see the poet himself and get to read the whole um, poem himself. But if I get confused and I think that a man's 
poem is actually a computer's poem, does it mean that the computer is a creative? Does it mean that the computer is an artist? That's one of the questions. Let's go into the next room. Uh, if this room was actually about men and machine and a little bit about text, we here uh, have another piece of work dealing with text. Uh, that's an artist called uh, uh, Hiding Behind the Name Miss Data. Uh, and she built two languages. One language is uh, the code language, and the other language is the CAPTCHA language. CAPTCHA is the um, um, line of letters that you type when you try to enter a site, and the site wants to check if you're a machine or a person. So people can choose their own text and write their own text over here, whatever they want to, or choose one of these ones and send it to themselves. Or they can make their own um, their own sticker. Um, if I made a sticker that with CAPTCHA, that means that they want to connect to people because the computer cannot read CAPTCHA. And if I made a uh, tattoo of a code, that means that I want to connect with computers because people cannot read codes. So she made people, she forces people to decide if they're better communicating with people or better communicating with person, with the computers. We have two um, artworks here dealing with the uh, last phase of Turing's life when he started to deal with morphogenesis. Morphogenesis is um, the, the, the studying, uh, Turing study to um, try to understand the patterns in nature. You see here the work of Nuit Barshai. Nuit Barshai is an Israeli artist living in the States. And she's taking microbes, um, living inside um, uh, petri dishes on agars. Agars is the food of the microbes, and she's of the bacteria, and she's um, putting music into the agar, which is the bacterial sound. And the music is making topography of the agar uh, um, layer. And then she's putting my, uh, bacteria into it, and you see that the bacteria is responding to different, um, different uh, forms of waves. We have the, the uh, sinus and the square and the triangle. Different bacteria, as you see here the bacteria names, different bacteria react to it. And we have different rhythm between 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz. And you can see here that the pattern is completely different relating to the... To the um, um, the, the wave to the, uh, to the bacteria itself and to the uh, frequency. And that's actually amazing because it's talking exactly about what Turing, Turing said, but in a very aesthetic um, uh, way of life, uh, way to present it. The last one is a work by Miri Segal. Miri Segal uh, is presenting a film uh, celebrating a new uh, computer, it's a fixture of course, it's not a real computer, called G-Mind. G-Mind is a computer working on telepathy. I wear it and by telepathy it gets it immediately the person I want to speak about so I get to see his Facebook and if I want to buy a t-shirt so the computer is telling me the price and what the t-shirt is made up and so on. Of course this kind of computer doesn't exist. Now we have the technology to build it by the way. Miri Segal herself is a doctor for mathematics besides being an artist and she claims that we have the technology but she did the combination and, and build it uh, all together. Uh, this uh, celebrating films comes with a don't be evil uh, title which is the, the non-formal title of Google. You can see the Google uh, letters and the Google colors. A little bit laughing about uh, Google and the uh, evil thing. Um, and it's actually talking about the future. It has the questions of uh, um, security and the question of privacy and the question of where the future is taking us. And I think the whole exhibition is talking about the relationship between men and computer and the whole um, work here is actually collaborations between men, machine, men and computer and asking questions about our future, about the the social issues that we want to deal here, about the society we want to live in. And I invite everyone to come to the exhibition and enjoy it. <laughs>